Welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce the translational research section. We will start with an overview of laboratory research programs uh, by Russ Pieper. Russ is a professor in our department and uh, director of basic science at the Brain Tumor Center. Please welcome Russ. So I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of the lab research programs at the Brain Tumor Center. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail with this. You may know the Brain Tumor Center is just a collection of neurosurgeons, neuroecologists, neuropathologists, and all the lab-based people who are interested in improving the outcome of patients with brain tumors. We're not an exclusionary group. We, in fact, would like everybody in the university to care about brain tumors. Um, we are a large group. We've got about 47 members. This includes 33 individual labs. Of course, Mitch is the director of the Brain Tumor Center. And these labs um, are um, distributed across campus. Um, the lab-based research programs generate about $5 million of individual NIH-based funding. So each of these labs is, or most all of these labs are NIH funded. And on top of that, we have a variety of programmatic research efforts, a, a brain tumor score, a PO1, and a T32 training grant um, that sort of help bring investigators together to work on larger projects. And of course, also have a significant amount of philanthropic support for the research that goes on in the Brain Tumor Center. Um, as I mentioned, the labs, the 33 labs are sort of distributed across San Francisco. And most of them are on the Mission Bay campus in the Diller building on the fourth floor on Third Street, pretty close to the baseball stadium, if anyone is ever in the neighborhood. And of course, most of our clinical activities are still up on the Parnassus campus. Um, the research, the lab-based research programs in the BTC can be roughly dis, um, um, divided into six areas of interest. And I'm just gonna briefly cover these so you can see the breadth of, of research that goes on in the program. These are imaging of tumors, genomics, cell signaling, stem cell biology, tumor immunology, and epidemiology. So in the area of imaging of tumors, I think we just heard some terrific talks um, by Sue and me and Javier about how imaging is applied. But of course, these imaging techniques have to be developed. And so there are people in labs um, developing the technology that then is gonna be applied to um, patients and uh, the diagnosis of disease. And that's essentially what this group of investigators are interested in doing, using in vivo and ex vivo techniques to figure out um, what's going on non-invasively. Uh, in terms of genomics, we also have a group of investigators that use sequencing and array-based techniques to actually analyze the nucleic acid DNA and the RNA of gliomas for alterations that may help them understand the underlying cause of the disease. This is just an example from Joe Costello's lab where if you have multiple samples from a given tumor, you can essentially trace how this tumor has developed and accumulated mutations over time and learn something about the history of the tumor, which might be important in, in um, treatment. We have a group, a large group that's interested in cell signaling and primarily in developing therapeutics. So essentially trying to understand what's wrong with this tumor in terms of how it's signaling and identify targets that might be useful therapeutically, sometimes new, sometimes repurposed therapeutics. Uh, my group is interested in telomeres and the end of chromosomes and how they're different in some brain tumors and how they might be targeted with existing agents like PARP inhibitors. Um, Bill Weiss's group on the right has actually developed new agents um, that can more effectively target mTOR signaling and that might be very effective going forward in um, glioblastoma. We also have a stem cell biology group uh, these individuals are housed up on the Parnassus campus. Of course, Brain Tumor Center investigators were the first to isolate human stem cells from the human brain. Uh, and now they've shifted to really understand how stem cells contribute to glioma formation. We know that brain tumor, brain tumor formation is many times essentially just disruption of normal development. So the more we learn about normal development, the more we can understand about where these brain tumors come from and how we can effectively target them um, going forward. We have a uh, growing interest in glioma immunology and um, vaccine development. Uh, we're particularly interested in CAR T cells, which are a very interesting uh, novel approach um, pictured on the bottom there in which one can modify T cells, take T cells out of patients, genetically modify them, 
so that they may more effectively target, uh, find, and uh, eliminate tumor cells. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities um, in this area, and we're actively pursuing all of these. Uh, we also have an epidemiology group. Um, these uh, individuals are interested in understanding the epidemiology of brain tumors, factors that are associated with the development of glioma and survival. And of course, this group was among the um, uh, uh, individuals that essentially found that uh, using just a few, um, uh, a few um, points, uh, IDH mutation, for instance, uh, 1P19Q deletion, you need very few uh, data points to be able to distinguish uh, one tumor from another, and their work has led, in fact, to changes in the way that WHO classifies many of these brain tumors. Um, so just to summarize, uh, we have a very large group of lab-based investigators in the Brain Tumor Center. We work very closely with neurosurgeons and neuro-oncologists. Uh, we're, we're highly motivated to move our discoveries from the bench to the bedside. And of course, we're all working to improve the outcome of patients with brain tumors, and that's our, our unifying goal. So with that, I will stop. Thank you very much.